Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. So this time we're going to be finally getting those polyline objects um, parsed from our tiled map and created into body objects or chain shapes into our box 2 d world. Um, that way our player can collide with it and we can make interactable maps um, just from tiled and it'll do all the work for us and we don't have to do any heavy lifting after we create our utility class which will allow us to kind of parse out these objects and build them for us. Um, so we're going to be using chain shapes which are kind of useful in terms of players like walking along a straight line um, and let's say for a tiled map you have a box right there you have a box right there. Um, chain shapes are useful for this kind of purpose, like if you had each one of these tiles boxed out, which I don't recommend just because that's really inefficient for box 2D um, worlds, uh, the less objects the better. Um, so think smart when you're creating these maps uh, and their object layers to be colli or their collidable object layers. Um, so anyway, back to the chain shapes. If you see here, um, it looks like the top is smooth just because they're right next to each other. However, Box2D will notice that there are N vertices here, um, like corner vertices, um, and when a player kind of starts going along this path across the top, they might kind of like hit that little area right there where this box ends and this box begins, and it'll kind of catch and um, has the potential to slow down the velocity or kind of instantaneously stop. Uh, as if he collided with this object as he's moving uh, along this path, this direction. Um, so what a chain shape will do is it'll kind of treat this as a smooth platform. It'll just smooth out into one uh, line across the top and it's really nice because it kind of joins uh, these where they're separated, the parts where they're separated. Um, so yeah, let's let's get rid of those and uh, move on to getting that parser set up. So we're not going to really be doing any work in our application class, um, mostly because we want to start breaking this up uh, to keep the code clean. And we'll just make a utility class. And we'll call it, uh, how about tiled object util. Um, and there's just going to be a few static methods in here. Um, one, just one that will actually be able to access outside of the class and the others will just kind of parse each different type of object. As you know, there, there are several different types. There are um, rectangles, circles, uh, triangles, and then of course the polyline. So there's just about four or five different uh, object types that we'll have to parse out, but for now we're just going to work on parsing the polyline um, and creating chain shapes. So we'll do parse, tiled, object, layer, um, and we'll want to pass it our world um, because without with that we can just directly add those map objects into our uh, box 2D world to work with so we don't have to do uh, any extra code outside of uh, the objective that this is given. Um, and then we'll need the map objects and that will come from the object layer and we'll just pass in the map objects to it. So I'll import that real quick and so yeah we can kind of just iterate through this map objects um, so that should be objects there we go and then we'll do map object object objects and we can use a for each loop um, and the way we can check what type of object we're getting is to use um, its instance of uh, in Java. And that allows you to kind of verify which class a certain object is. And that, that kind of involves like polymorphism. Um, and that'll be poly line map object. And so to understand instance of, let's say you have a list of strings um, and you want it to act like an array list. Um, 
So I just get those imported. Uh, so you'll see here, although we have a list object, um, we pass it an array list, and that means that if we do like if test instance of array list, then um, it'll check to see if that uh, array list or that list we're given is an array list. And um, if it isn't, then it'll just continue. But because we passed it an array list object, then we're able to check against that. And so it's kind of the same idea here. I know that was kind of a poor explanation. Um, I'm just kind of winging it off the top of my head. But um, you have to check the object type. And that's really the only way you can check that unless you go into tiled. And um, I think you can add like property. Yeah, you'd add like object properties and that's just that's more work than necessary. So we can just go back here and check the instance of what kind of object we're actually getting. And it'll return the right kind of object type. Um, so then we can do, uh, we want to create a shape uh, for the body that we'll be creating. Um, so shape equals, um, we'll want this to be our create poly line. Um, we'll just send it our object like that and cast it over. Um, so yeah, let's get down here and make that method public, or no, that should be private static chain shape, uh, create polyline, polyline map object, object, okay. Um, so there's that now. Um, so yeah, to continue where we left off up here, let's get this going. So we're going to want to take our shape, and once we figure out what kind of shape and we get it in initialized down here, um, we want to add it to our box 2D world. So as we would normally, uh, as we've done before when we added our player, um, we make the body, the body definition, and uh, we create the shape for it and we give it some vertices to give it like the X and Y coordinates of how it's shaped and then we create the fixture, dispose the shape, and add the body to the world um, when we do that up here. I kind of skipped over that but um, we're going to be doing the same thing. So there's that. Uh, we'll want the body um, uh, we'll just do, I guess, body. That'll be fine. Okay. BDEF uh, equals new body definition, and that body definition type equals. Uh, it's going to be a static body. Uh, because we don't want it to move. It is a world object like a platform or ground. Um, and then we're going to want to have the body dot, or maybe, it, yeah, body equals world dot create body with that definition uh, for the physical properties. And then we're going to want body dot create fixture with our shape from up here that we create that polyline. And we'll just give it a density of one um, variable shape equals. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, if we end up getting one that isn't a polyline map object because we aren't really ready to handle anything other than a polyline, uh, we'll just want to skip over it. Um, and then after that, we can just dispose the shape. Perfect. Okay, so this is all taken care of. Um, let's go down here and create our polyline object that we're going to be using for our box 2D world. Um, so there's a few things with this method we're going to have to take into account. So uh, first, we want to get all the coordinates of the polyline that we'll be dealing with. So float. Uh, that's 
the vertices, poly, or, oh, did I call that object? I better call that polyline. Um, polyline dot get polyline. So that'll get the polyline object. And then we want all the vertices. Um, we want transform vertices just because that'll unproject uh, the location and it'll give us better coordinates to work with um, when we're converting them into box 2D vertices. Um, and so the thing about this though is when you have, uh, when you're getting the vertices, if you notice that when I click like this, um, there's one vertice here and one vertice here just for that line. So there's two vertices per line. Um, so that means there's another one here and another one here for that one. And we're already at four. What we want to do is create the chain shape so it's just one, two, three, four, five. Instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, we're going to handle that by creating a new set of vertices um, with x and y's vector 2 um, array. And we'll just call that uh, old vertices uh, equals new vector 2. And that'll be vertices.length divided by 2. Um, there we go, import vector 2, and then for in i, we're going to go through all those vertices and add them to those world vertices. And uh, so we got i is less than world vertices dot length, i plus plus, and then we have world vertices at i equals uh, new vector 2, and we'll want the x to be vertices i times 2. Um, that is because we want every other vertice. Um, so there's that one, uh, and then we want to divide that, because if you remember, we are uh, putting it into the box 2D world, so we, we divide it. Um, yeah. So there's that one. And then we have vertices i times 2 plus 1. And that'll kind of give you that second coordinate here. So we get this one um, and the y of it. Okay, so divide by constants.ppm. Oh, you know what? Maybe... Yeah, maybe that just returns the list of vertices as x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. Um, yeah, I could be mistaken on that. I, I've always thought that was uh, just... Yeah, never mind. Okay, so we have the world vertices. Now we need a chain shape. So chain shape cs equals new chain shape uh, cs dot create chain and we'll want to use the world vertices um, and then after that we just return cs and that'll be our chain shape. Uh, what's going on here? Okay. Um, all right. And so with all that taken care of, we now have something that will parse chain shape objects. And to add them to our world, all we have to do is use our tiled object utility dot parse tile object layer. We want to send out our world and we want to send our object layer uh, get you can use a string and that is collision layer and get objects okay um, 
And that's really all we have to do in our application class. And once that's all taken care of, uh, we can move on. Um, so let's test it out real quick and see if our lines are actually holding up in there. Um, it should give the appearance that we're hitting the these boundaries. Um, so yeah, let's wait for this to build. Okay, um, and there we are. So yep, it's uh, now colliding with that line. Um, and just to give you a better picture of it, I will turn off the rendering of the tiled map um, just so we can see what the box 2D world looks like using our box 2D render debug renderer. Okay. And there we go. Now we can see these lines, and um, they're added to our world, and we can really add anything we want. Um, but yeah, that's all we had to do today, and we accomplished it, and now I can move on. So I'm not sure what I want to cover next, but I might go into Box 2D Lights. Um, I do want to get into Ashley's stuff soon, uh, but... I think I might just keep focusing on some more box 2D, advanced box 2D shapes and um, different kinds of joints and collision handling. Um, I might go into sensors briefly um, and from there just kind of build a nice portfolio of tutorials on how to use some of those box 2D shapes. Um, but for the most part, now you have, uh, you can create maps with collidables. You don't have to get into any kind of fancy logic or anything. You can just create objects, throw them in there, and they'll do the work for you. Um, so with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial so far, and I'll see you next time.